Hey guys, this is Nitin and welcome back to yet another cool project. So today we are talking about Android webcams. So I'm in a situation right now where my laptop does not have a webcam and uh, let's say I want to attend some online meetings or interviews. I want to present myself professionally and if I do not have access to a good quality webcam then you can you know how it can ruin the entire session. So uh, in order to make sure that we can present ourselves professionally uh, it's always an essential part that we use a good quality webcam so i'm using a rog laptop which does not comes with a inbuilt webcam so what does that means is we do not have access to a webcam so ultimately i had to buy a usc webcam for the market and you know the webcams are generally made for cheap video calls they are like very low quality cameras and they just get the work done but uh what if you want to use a good quality camera like a dslr so you need to buy a very high-end high price camera and that is not the case for everyone so today in this video we are going to talk about how we can use our android phones to just use their camera as a webcam to our system so uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky however i'll i'll talk about all the steps that is required to get this done so for now let's get started so this is my github repository where i've already shared the instructions on how to use the android webcam um, notice here I also added like 4K because you can actually stream the 4K video quality stream from your phone to your desktop or laptop or any PC um, uh, if your phone actually supports the 4K video streaming or if your phone have a 4K camera. So uh, let's talk about the very easy steps that we need to follow to get this done. So basically this tutorial is initially focused for the Linux users. So the steps are for the Linux based system. and mostly this is for the ubuntu 18.04 so if you are on windows uh, we will have a different set of tutorials uh, that would be much easier than this one however, because uh, linux requires some addition steps to be followed but for now for this video we are going to focus on the linux part so uh, setting up your pc has the steps that you need to follow to install the applications uh, which are required to do the task so so there is a handy ap application called scrcpy uh, which is basically going to use um, ADB in the background to mirror your Android phone screen to your desktop so that you can very easily uh, manage your phone. You can interactively manage your phone from the desktop system uh, through this application. So this is very handy uh, when you are using your phone as a webcam and you do not have access to the screen. You can use this application to access your phone. Uh, so you can install that. For now, I'm not going to install this because uh, in order to just use the phone as a webcam, you can still get this thing done without using the CRCPUI. So the very imp important piece of uh, software that you need to install is called ffmpeg which is going to uh, read a video stream from your phone and then write it to a virtual camera that we will be going to create and then you need android debugging tools so that you can actually uh, read the parts from your phone to fetch these streams and then write it to the virtual camera on your desktop and finally we need a v4l2 loopback software so what this basically does is it, it creates a virtual camera on your linux system although uh, if you find online there are a couple of steps how to install it using app but those usually does not work so in my observation just cloning the original repository and uh, making it from the source gets the work done so so these are the essential steps uh, and i also suggest that you install the scrc py so that you can access the android screen so basically uh, once your app repository is updated you can follow these steps to download the packages or software that i have mentioned here so first um, first one is called crcpy uh, this is not necessary but uh, you should install it second one is fmpeg once you install execute this step you will have the application installed i'm not going to execute this for now because these are already installed on my system so uh, let's talk about uh, the v4l to loopback so basically most of the people will have difficulty in setting this uh, application so uh, either you can follow the steps here or you can visit the github repository and then you can basically download the application i mean the, clone the repository and then make the application so for now uh, because all these steps are already done i'm going to show you how this works so um, basically uh, you'll even need to open the ip webcam uh, install the IP webcam on your phone. Yeah, so this setting up Android phone basically talks about the IP webcam uh, This is a free application available on Play Store, which you can use to uh, Use your phone as an IP web camera. 
So basically what it does is it starts a HTTP stream on your phone and then you can access that stream over HTTP through the port where your phone has started the application. However, when you download the application through Play Store, it will be filled with ads and you don't want to see ads every time. So there is a, a modded application you can say a pro version of the IP webcam which is available into this repository. You can click on this link to download it. And once it is downloaded, you can basically install it on your, on your phone. So the very first step in order to use your phone as a web camera is to uh, install the application on your phone. And once that is done, you can run the application. And then if you go to the all the way down and you will see this start server option. Once you hit this option, uh, you'll see your phone screen will look something like this. And in the bottom, there is called something called IPv4 address. So this is the IP address uh, where your video stream is available. If your phone and your laptop is in the same Wi-Fi network, uh, you can even visit this address to view the web camera interface in your browser. Uh, but for now, because we mostly uh, want to deal with 4K streams, so we want uh, high bandwidth with very less latency. So what we are going to do now is uh, we will connect our phone through the USB. And then once it is done, we will use this ADB, which stands for Android Debug Device Debugger or debugger bridge and basically we will list out all the devices which is connected to our system so uh, let's see uh, for now so i have one phone connected to my system and, and this is important because um, i'm using um, android studio environment so basically i have multiple virtual android devices available so when i run them uh, the adb will get confused about which android device to use for the ip webcam so we need to explicitly specify what device we want to use so for now because there is only one device connected to the system uh, we can see this device listed down here so uh, this serial number is important to us so we will use this later on so once this is done what we need to do is we need to export this as the android serial environment variable so we can see export Android serial. So with this, whenever we use, we, we're going to use ADB or the F, any other applications like uh, SCRCPY, it will know that what device to target. So uh, the IP webcam option is already done from my side because I'm already using my phone. So what I will do is I'll just show you the, um, the, the SCRCPY, how it works. So I will simply type a crcpy and what it will do is it will connect to my phone and then it will uh, show my phone screen so basically this is my phone screen and because i'm streaming my camera so i can control my phone here and you can see the ip webcam application is already running on my screen so uh, this is handy when you are like recording and also one more thing you can you see uh, it looks like i am upside down this is only because i have turned on the camera uh, mirror option so that you can basically use it in during the meetings so i'll stop this screen sharing for now and basically now you understand that we are already running the android app on our phone and then uh, we need to uh, basically do the port forward thing now why because uh, once the android application is running uh, we want to access the video stream onto a local host so that uh, we can integrate it with our virtual camera so so in order to do that uh, there is a simple one line command called adb forward uh, so this tcp8080 is basically the port at which our ip webcam is running and then so basically you can read about the the position of the port so because uh, the camera is running on port 8080 and we're also going to mount it on port 8080 on our system so i can use this command and then i can execute this in our terminal and once um, uh, this will be completed uh, you'll see uh, if you visit the localhost port 8080 you should be able to see the webcam interface uh, because i've already forwarded the port so i'll just go to the new tab and i'll type localhost 8080 and you can see the web interface is already running so now what i will do is uh, i'll show you one more thing so because uh, this is the interface and we cannot stream this interface directly onto the virtual camera so we need a video stream so for that uh, if you change the url to slash video uh, you should be able to see that we are basically streaming the video to our local host port 8080 and then we are going to use this address and pass it to ffmpeg which will basically write it to the uh, virtual camera on our device 
So when we build the VFRL to loopback device uh, in this step, uh, it creates a virtual camera for us. So you can also always go back to the original repository and you can find instructions on how to create a virtual camera. So because my Lightwork does not have a camera, so just by executing these commands, it creates a virtual camera at slash tape slash video zero. So in order to confirm that, I can also do ls. And you can see there is a video camera device available on my system. So basically, uh, I need to push some frames to this virtual camera so that I can read it from any other application where I want to use the camera. So for, for that reason, uh, we need to publish some video streams to that virtual camera. And to, in order to do that, what we need to do is we need FFmpeg. So this FFmpeg is basically a, a library to manage video files and streams. So now we know that our video camera is running on localhost port 8080 slash video. So what we will do is we'll use FFmpeg to read the video stream from this address and then we will write it back to the vfrl2 device that is located here and once we execute these steps uh, you'll see our so we just need to execute these steps and with this what it will do is uh, it will start writing video streams to our vfrl2 device so i have already a stream running so you can see the output here and it basically keeps on writing the video frame to the virtual camera so now in order to confirm that our virtual camera is running, what I will do is I will open a meeting link. So uh, one more note, note here is that the Chrome actually will, will not detect the virtual camera. So that is the downside from the Chrome. So you cannot use it right now. So what I will do is um, I'll use Firefox. So Firefox basically supports this uh, unidentified camera. So if I open some meeting link, uh, you will see that uh, it is able to detect my camera and basically uh, this is a dummy video and it is able to detect it so so uh, this camera you see it is running it is basically the android camera which i am streaming via usb to my localhost port 8080 and then i am using ffmpeg to to publish the video stream received through port 8080 to the virtual device created by v4l to loop back and then basically using this device i am able to stream it to some online meeting applications so only chrome is not supported and otherwise if you want to attend anything through the browser you can always use firefox and if you are using some applications like zoom or, or meetings uh, microsoft meets uh, you can, these devices will always be, be listed there so you can you can use the, them at that point as well so uh, this was the instructional step about how to, to set up these things and once you have done all these steps basically installing the applications setting up the android apps so there is a helpful script that i'm providing into this repository what you need to do is once you download the repository you just need to modify this android serial uh, for me because i know uh, i have a oneplus device so if the serial number changes by chance uh, what this is a dynamic um, part where it lists the devices and then it, it grabs out the oneplus device and then it gets its serial number but for you if you want to just keep it simple you can always delete this part and then write your serial number down here once you've done this and you can also configure these these other variables for example if you want to use a different v 4 2 device you need to create it first and then once that is done you can write it here you can also modify the camera ports and all those things and once that is done uh, you can basically use the script so so this script is actually right now in my path but once you clone the repository uh, i'll have to use the command something like this ipvpm.sh and it should be in your path so for now what i'll do is i'll just show you how it works so if you write this down uh, you'll see you have the these following commands available to work out with so the very important one is called hyphen f uh, which will what it will do is it will automatically launch the IP webcam application on your Android phone. Uh, just make sure that it is already installed. If it is not running, it will start it. And once the application is running, uh, remember in the previous steps, uh, we went and then we clicked on this start server button. It will do that automatically. And once that is done, it will also automatically do the port forward thing. And finally, once the port forward is completed, uh, the FFmpeg part where it writes the stream to the virtual camera device, it will also do that part for you. 
so it's a full automated step uh, script to do all those things and uh, there are also some other commands which you can use for example if scrcpy is installed on your system which is used to mirror the android screen so you can use hyphen s command so for example if i do hyphen s uh, you'll see it will just start the android running screen on my system so uh, all together this is a helpful script and you can do a lot of things and you can also come back and then modify is this thing as per your need uh, but just know that uh, all the functions are already written and all the automation that i wanted to do from my end i have already done it in case you want to modify you can do that uh, but this is how we stream the video camera from our phone to our system and then write it to a virtual camera device and once that is done uh, you can use this virtual camera device to attend any meetings live and it's, it's going to basically forward the streams uh, let me know if this works for you and basically if you follow the steps mostly the problem happens when you have this v4l2 loopback device and if it is not installed correctly so uh, if you talk about the windows application then we'll talk about the how to use the android webcam on windows system in another video but for now this is how it works uh, let me know what you think about it if this helps you or not and whatever it is uh, whether it is feedbacks instructions or on just issues just post it into comments and and we'll see it together and i'll try to help you out